Hi and welcome to RC Cocktailer. They call this winter wonderland. People are going to skiing, but I want to fly. And I cannot fly in these conditions because everywhere is high snow. Up to 25 or 30 centimeters, sometimes even knee deep. So all tracks <laughs> leading to my, my fields and my forests where I'm normally flying are covered with snow. I cannot land, I cannot start, nothing I cannot do. But I will use this occasion to talk about safety with you. Safety in helicopter flying is very important. We want this to be a beautiful hobby and we don't want to get hurt or even worse killed by our helicopters. And I show you what you can do. Flying in snow and rain is very unsafe and I tell you why. So let's go inside and talk about safety. Inside it's much better. Safety with helicopters begins on the ground, begins with the transmitter. Always have in mind that the transmitter has to be switched on first. Welcome to HTH Welcome to and throttle hold. This is the second important thing. I have it. This switch is my throttle hold switch and this is, I call it the holy switch because the throttle hold, when it's activated and the throttle is cut off, the motor cannot run by chance. So now, and you have to select, of course, your model. If you have a radio transmitter like me, I have 10 helicopters and I have them all here. Every, each of them has a number because each of them has a small receiver. And they, are, they have their own file in my radio. So you have to choose, of course, the right model. Now you see the servo dance and that's the sign that it's initiated. And this should be your holy rule. The same is when you are landing. First disconnect the battery and then if you are going home uh, uh, switch off the transmitter. Never the other way around. So when you have the new helicopter you can trust if it's a bind to fly model or RTF model like OMP Hobby M2, the Evo, and M2 Hobby uh, M1, you should check if the swash plate is part, the most important part in a helicopter, was uh, about steering, is really straight. So um, there are small instruments, you can check it, there are many videos that show you it would be, would, would be too much, but the swash, float, the swash plate decides in which direction the helicopter flies, and when the swash plate, we check this always with self-level switch off, is not straight, the helicopter cannot be picked up in a good way, and it could be that the Helix wash plate is tilted in such a way that it flies toward me, towards you, and it would be too late if you realize it only afterward. So it's always good to be prepared to check this. One thing I always do before every every flight, I have thousands of flights behind me, I'm checking the servos. Do you see this? It is, I am turning to the right, left, back and forth and when I see that the servos are working smooth and going directly in relation to my stick inputs, I know that everything is okay. And if they are moving in such a way or rapidly, you know that something is wrong and the flight with such a helicopter could have catastrophic um, results. because this. The three cyclic servos are the only way that ensure you to uh, give positive and negative pitch. You also should check if you have the same amounts of positive and negative pitch. But these are um, setup uh, topics. But it's important to know what the helicopter is doing. If you see it only during flight, if something is wrong with the helicopter, now I'm in, in idle modes. Uh, then it's too late. So that's why you should check everything before. So, and when you are picking up the helicopter, I always take care that the helicopter is 
in enough distance to me. I never take off the ground the helicopter when it's closer than two meters maybe and I try to not let the helicopter come closer to me than two meters and this is in slow flight and when I'm in fast flight I'm even taking more distance to myself. The bigger the helicopter, now for instance I'm flying the M4 Max and the M4, I'm having even more distance. I try to have more distance to myself and to people around. This is another very, very important uh, factor. Uh, sometimes you might go on the field with a friend or with uh, children or you will meet uh, foreign people, dog walkers. You always have to keep in mind that they are in enough distance to your helicopter. If somebody is walking under your helicopter, you are flying somewhere there on the field and the person is running, you should really friendly um, advise the person, tell her that not to go in this direction, there's a helicopter, it's not safe. You should never fly above yourself, you should never fly in the line to um, behind yourself. You should always have the helicopter in your, in your uh, 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 field of view that you have. And if somebody appears, a um, friendly person even, that gives you a question, that is asking you something, you should never take your eyes for a millisecond off um, your helicopter. I'm not even, never, I'm never looking um, on, on, the, on the display because this, I'm not a such experienced pilot, I'm flying since two and a half years. It's, you cannot take the eyes away from your helicopters. These helicopters are flying very, very fast and you, you, you could have, to, you have to, to search for him where he is meanwhile when you were looking somewhere else and that can be too late. So you cannot take your eyes off. If somebody um, uh, asks you how much it costs, does it have a camera, um, uh, can I fly something, can I try it, you have to stay focused on your helicopter. It might not be easy, um, even if a dog, dog comes running by and tries to attack you if you don't have, look at your helicopter or he, or he even wants to uh, sniff only on you, you have to really bring the machine down first and then you can solve all the other problem. Never look away, never get distracted by anything, by planes, by helicopters, real helicopters, full-size helicopters, nothing. You have to focus on your model because a helicopter needs 100% of your concentration and uh, because of this I'm having even a vibration alarm. I have timers in my radio for all batteries if this is a kind of um, experience. I tested my batteries. I'm never flying to very low level of, of battery and I'm getting a vibration alarm. So my um, radio gives me bzz, 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 and I know I have 30 seconds. Bzz, bzz, I have 20 seconds and then I have a countdown until the landing and that's my signal. I'm not looking at this display. I'm looking at my helicopter until the rotor blades stop on the ground. And as I told you, always disconnect the battery and then switch off the radio, never the other way around. And the same, switch on the radio, connect the battery, and that's the most important uh, to have daily safety. I once um, did not switch off the uh, throttle and I was flying in normal mode, so I had the throttle position in this way, and with my knee or another part of my elbow, I was leaning down to the helicopter, I had my hand here, and the helicopter started running. So I hit my thumb and this was a bad experience. I have seen pictures of people that were hit with a hand. I even try, although I'm hitting throttle hold and I'm doing everything that is possible, I try to plug in the battery in such a way that I'm not really in front of the, I try to hold the helicopter. Under this, I never grab the helicopter in such way that the blades could hit me, I automatically, I got used to hold the helicopter far away from me, not close and looking at it when the battery is connected. So these are all things that prevent that you can get hurt and I have seen many, many hurts. Even this small and one hurt people on their legs. Um, the thing when I'm, air, I'm, I'm in the air, not only I'm holding the helicopter on a distance, I'm also avoiding 
excessive flying close to me, pulling the machine up in the last moment. This is something I do not like to look at. And I'm flying side to side. I'm trying, even if I'm circles flying, I'm trying to make the circles on one side, on the other side. I'm always training everything from all directions. And the next important point regarding uh, safety is uh, when you're at home, uh, when you have your helicopters on the bench, you should check them regularly. Uh, when you are flying a lot, like me, I'm flying many thousand flights per year, something could happen because of vibrations or other things. A screw might got a little bit untightened. I once even lost a screw and I didn't realize it. Um, I had big luck, nothing happened, but you cannot count on luck. You don't want to have surprises. So now in winter time, it's outside so bad weather, it's the best time to take all each of your helicopters and really proof every single screw if she's fitted, if she if you can can tighten her a bit more. It's not enough to tighten her, you have to take her out when there's no plastic, when it's only aluminum, for instance, and carbon fiber, you have to take the whole screw out, give her new um, Loctite, blue Loctite, and tighten her again and allow her, allow the Loctite to, to, uh, uh, to dry because uh, fresh Loctite will not, will not hold the screw. You should do this with every screw, it's not only here on the rotor mat, not only in the feathering shaft. These are very important screws because if you get screws and the feathering shaft get loosened, your blades will fall, the, your, your rotor mat will disassemble itself, the blades could, blades could fall, fly like two knives and they could hit you uh, in the worst case. So all these screws in the rotor mat, these balls have to be tight. Um, you have to be careful with them because you can also break them if, if they are very tight. Don't try to take them out, then it's good. Um, you have to um, uh, try all these ball screws, mainly the, the frames, the screws that are holding the, the, the tail blade. And another tip, if you hear any strange song, sound, uh, vibration, uh, change sound by the by the, the tail rotor. This could mean there's some dirt inside, some some grass. You should immediately land this machine. You should not count on your luck that nothing happens. Um, the same is when you see some kind of strange behavior. It makes something, and it's not the wind. It's not your stick and foot. Take the machine down, check her, and the same after a crash. If you have a crash, you should check if the main uh, shaft is straight or bent, if the feathering shaft is bent, and change them. The same is with the tail boom. When the tail boom is slightly uh, bent, don't try to re-bend him. It could break because of vibrations and then you would have, would have much bigger damage than if you change it uh, at once. Um, so these are really tips that are very, very simple and now in the winter time, I really take all these machines. I don't like really working on my machines, but I like to fly safe. And that's the reason why I'm doing it. So uh, test all the screws, test everything, test the servos before every single flight. Make it a habit. The same habit like using the throttle hold as the holy switch that prevents you from injuries. Um, switching on the transmitter at the first thing switching it off as the last thing regularly try if the if the swash plate is leveled um, try it with a new new model try it with a kit before you, you 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 take the helicopter up you have to be sure that it's in a good way set up because otherwise you will not have the control that you would have on a very good setup helicopter if you have the swash plate leveled you can make periods if there's no wind they will stand on the place there's always some movement, but if you have a not level swash plate, your helicopter will escape in the direction where the first swash plate is tilted, uh, as if you would give an, an in input and your fly helicopter flies in one direction, although you give any, you don't give any input. So I hope this helped you, and um, this is a good.
thing for long winter hours. I have 10 helicopters, so I have a lot to do and to, to test them all, to check them all. But I can be sure and you should do it during the season as well. So if you're flying a lot, take the, take the time to check the helicopters because this is a kind of life insurance and health insurance, not only for you. We always have to remember we have a lot of um, responsibility for, for walkers, for people that are curious. Um, we are the people who, which are flying and we should be good examples um, and, and, and uh, we, 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 should be, uh, we should be responsible. And responsible flying is safe flying, avoiding um, uh, having our con helicopters have contact with other people. So I hope this helped you and if you like this video give us a like, if you like it very much subscribe to our channel and see you again. And of course Merry Christmas!